looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 set to lift off at 12.24 p.m. Eastern Time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Back in college, we just make, used to make use of the library to recruit people. Um, and uh, we used to book meeting rooms and just have discussions over there. There's a lot of such things that happen in the beginning where you don't really have money and space is an expensive business. So we used to work with uh, a company that uh, was under Hulsu Metro Station. There was a maker space for our Hyperloop project. And we said, why not just go and ask them? And they charged us for the internet and uh, a small uh, you know, space on their, uh, on their first floor. And we said, we'll just go and work there. So it was an interesting phase of the company. Uh, essentially, back in 2017, Aves and I we were a part of the Hyperloop India team. That's where we met each other, started working with each other. And we were looking for more such competitions to be a part of. Through that process, we came to this conclusion that there is not enough satellite data at this point of time for certain applications. That's how we decided that why not just make our own satellites, put them in space and use that kind of uh, data for a lot of these applications. What you and I can see with our eyes is in three wavelengths. It's red, green and blue. And when superimposed on each other, they make all the colors that we see. But what I can do with hyperspectral imaging is say that there is a certain amount of chlorophyll content or carotenoid content, uh, or this is the soil characteristic. So a lot of these things basically uh, are available to you when you start looking at the chemistry of the Earth. And that's what we do. We basically look at what the Earth is made up of on its surface. For India, agriculture-wise, uh, hyperspectral data is a boon. Um, and then if you look at other areas as well, where uh, you have to look at pollution, um, you have to look at illegal mining. Uh, these are problem statements that we started with. Ideally, the process uh, starts with we do the design activities. Okay, Then uh, we have some promising vendors for carrying out the manufacturing activities as per our design requirements. Then after that, we'll go for the anodization, which uh, plays a very big role in our uh, in our space uh, launch requirements. There is uh, enough facility to prototype it. Uh, so the electronics lab behind me is where we do a lot of prototyping work. Anything that has to be prototyped, tested, validated before it's actually used on the satellites uh, is being done here. So those are rate tables, they rotate uh, based on inputs provided by the flight software that would actually be running on the satellite. So this is called the FlatSat. FlatSat is used to test out all the interfaces um, within the satellite as well as to simulate uh, the space environment. Things like those uh, get tested here. The satellite is finally ready to be integrated together um, and tested as a complete unit. Assembly integration of the satellite happens downstairs at the clean room. We have enough clean room space to do 20 satellites at the same time. So it takes somewhere around a month to actually start building the satellite. And then it takes somewhere around a month again to test the satellite in its completely built state. The satellite undergoes a rigorous amount of testing so that we are sure that the satellite will work in space. Because in space, it's very tricky. You've got temperature ranges that are from, you know, minus 80, minus 90 degrees, all the way to 100, 120 degrees. We put the satellite, put it in a chamber, remove all the air, heat it up, cool it down, and see if our satellite operates the way we want it to. You've got um, launch vibrations, which are very tricky to handle. You're basically strapping your satellite on a bomb, on a huge bomb and sending it to space. What we do is we try to recreate these forces on the satellite using a vibration shaker. It basically just shakes the satellite. What this tells us is our satellite is strong enough to go to space. So we go through the entire life cycle of the satellite over here. We come up with different types of requirements for what the satellites and the payload should do. For all of these things, you have to make it very robust. And these design phases can be taken care of in this facility itself. We have an ISO 7 and an ISO 8 clean room. Currently, we are standing in the ISO 8 clean room and there's an ISO 7 clean room behind me. What this ISO rating means is that if you take a volume of one cubic feet right here, there are less than one lakh particles in this space. Inside, it's 10 times more cleaner than that. Once the satellites leave Pixel, it goes to the launch site, it gets integrated onto the rocket, 
on which it's supposed to go. We do basic functional checks to see if everything is good with the satellite, if it's working just fine, and then it's time for launch. Once the satellite is in space, now is the time you start controlling the satellite, taking photos and getting it back to Earth. All that magic happens in the mission control room. Let's go there. So this is where once our satellites are launched, uh, the team sits here and kind of interacts with those satellites to kind of monitor their interacts with them. All our images are downlinked from the satellite to the ground station and then from there it can be moved either to our platform analytics platform where you can do further analysis or it can even be in certain cases directly sent to the certain customers right so so yeah so that's the role of the ground station that it could be so it could be ksat or any other ground station with whom we are partnered with we've specialized in hyperspectral imaging we've built visible near infrared satellites well basically we're expanding the range of these satellites to go further into infrared this is the first uh, private uh, assembly integration testing facility for the assembly of the satellites in a very quick turnaround time. Over the last five years now, uh, we are three satellites old and um, we have almost 180 people. Honestly, it's just been an exercise in learning how to build amazing satellites, amazing payloads and uh, what we've done with the three satellites is we've demonstrated our concept. We have created a data set which has been validated with customers, users, and we're quite excited to now commercialize it this year.